was away to church. And I was riding out of church. I just started praying, God, overwhelm us with your spirit. That's my whole prayer. Overwhelm us with your spirit. Invade us with your glory. That was my whole prayer. All the way up here. Overwhelm us with your spirit. Invade us with your glory. And when I came up here, they were singing my prayer. Wow. I said, God, let me know. Today is going to be something special. It's not by feelings. It's not by feelings. It's by faith. And remember, remember, God, here should, here should be a prayer every day. You know, I, 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 we talk about the Father, we talk about the Son, and we just kind of often just throw in the Spirit as a, as a add on. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit. But you know what? Without the Spirit, we wouldn't know the Father and the Son. Without the Spirit, we couldn't worship. Without the Spirit, we wouldn't know the Word of God. Without the Spirit, we couldn't excite and excite and raise our hands before the Lord. Because you know why? Because we'd be dead and dry and cracker juice. I wish you to raise your hands right now. Raise them. There's plenty of people right now that wish they could have this privilege without the threat of being shot or the threat of being hung on a cross or the threat of, of the government coming in and shutting it down. Listen, we have a privilege and we ought to exercise that privilege. Praise the Lamb of God. I want you right now to say this to me. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Overwhelm us with your power. Overwhelm us with your love. Overwhelm us with everything you've got, including, above all, your presence. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We love you and we praise you. Let's sing that, let's sing that one more that chorus again. I want us all to sing it together. But this time I want you to raise your hands and I want you to be here the whole time you sing it. Say, overwhelm me. God, take it personal. Take it personal. Take it personal. Look at somebody say, take it personal. Don't just come in here to come in here and satisfy somebody else. Come in here to satisfy God. Amen. Overwhelm me, God, with your power. Overwhelm me with your spirit.
glory, glory, glory. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. He's awesome. He's awesome. He's awesome. How many's got a hurt in your heart? Put your hands up. How many's got a hurt in your spirit? Put your hands up. How many's got things going on you wish one had to put your hands up? And just ask God to touch right now. Ask your Holy Spirit. God, let your Holy Spirit invade us. Invade us. Invade this place. Flood it with your spirit. And we thank you right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, while we're in the spirit of worship, we're going to do communion. Amen. God's awesome. All the time, God is awesome. God has shown me, I believe God has shown me, shown me, shown me that you know what? He doesn't want us to be satisfied with church as usual anymore. Never again, church as usual. Praise God. No more church, look at Smite Town, no more church as usual. The Bible says, For I received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he took bread, the betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do will never see me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. Drink it off as you drink it, and remember some me. For as long as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death. Till he come. Wherefore, well, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so that he eateth that bread and drinketh that cup, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. If we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Father, I love you. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, God, for all you do for us. I thank you for all that you do. I thank you for all that you do for us. God, your hands are on us, Lord, and we thank you, God, for all that you do. Lord, in the name of Jesus, you're an awesome God. You're a powerful God. Everything is in your hands, and we trust you for it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible said on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread. He blessed it and he broke it. And he said, take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. Also on the same night he took the cup and he said, this is my blood in the New Testament. Drink it and remember some things. Come, let us join at the Lord's table.
need your power in the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lamb of God. Give the Lord a hand clap and pray. I'm giving you a challenge right now. Whenever we pray from here on out, because I get up here and get going, I sometimes forget to say it, and the Lord keeps convicting me of it. Hey, you heard of crazy love, right? Crazy love. Into her house. 
And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Y'all say, sit at his feet and heard his word. Say that. Sit at his feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving. Y'all say cumbered. I'm going to get into that word because we don't use that word too much. Anybody use cumbered lately? I've used cucumber lately, but not cumbered. <laughs> and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Mary, you know your sister needs, you know, get up out from my feet and go take care of things. <laughs> he didn't say that. Wow. He said unto her, Martha, Martha, Mary, look, whenever Jesus uses those says things more than once, whenever he says your name more than once, he's trying to get your attention. So Martha, she's so covered with what's going on, and she's so mad at her sister. And he says, Martha, Martha, calm down, girl. You are careful and troubled about many things. That word careful and troubled means that she was on the verge of an anxiety attack. How many here feel like anxiety is about to, you ain't got to raise your hand. But how many here feel like anxiety is at your door and is trying to bust it down right now? In the last few days, there was times where you thought you were going to explode. You're in the right place at the right time. He says, but one thing is needful, one thing is necessary, one thing without a shadow of a doubt. Out of all this stuff that's going on here, there's one thing. Don't say one thing. There's one thing that's needful, and Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Stretch forth your hands this way, God. We love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, God, for all you do for us, Lord. You do more for us than we ever even imagined. There's things you're working for us right now behind the scenes. There's, you're, making, you're making appointments for us that we don't even know about, divine appointments. We're going to come in contact with people in the next few days, and we're going to say, how did this happen? Or something's going to take place, and we're going to wonder, how did that go? It's because, God, is, we know you're making divine appointments right now. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch and anoint each and every person here in a very powerful way. Let this day be a day of remembrance. Let it go down in our mind as the day that we did the one thing that is needful. And we sat at your feet. And we felt your peace. And we felt your power. In the name of Jesus, we love you. And we praise your name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You be seated. On the way down, tell somebody, the past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing shall be impossible. Now I'm going to give you a challenge right now. I want you to take your mind off of everything else. Everything else. Forget about what you got after service that you got to go to. I got places I'm going. I've sort of got a hospital nurse I'm going to. I've got it out of my mind. I know last night, I'm more often than May has been there last night, but you know what? That's out of my all of my mind right now is this and the presence and the overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit. I want you right now, this is, I dare you. If you got a phone, unless you're expecting a very important call or you wait for somebody to call and give you some emergency information, turn your phone down, turn it off, put it in your pocketbook, put it in anything, just leave the phone alone because I guarantee you, just about the time you start really getting it, their phone will ring. There'll be a text. Hey, you want to do lunch? And God's trying to feed you right now. Put your phone down. Quit looking at the people around you. Some of them look good. Some of them are trying. Don't worry about the people. Right now, if you want the Holy Spirit to overwhelm you, and you want the Holy Spirit to bring you comfort and peace like you've never felt before, you've got to get your mind off of everything else around you. You've got to hold on to God right now. You hear me? Hold on to His presence right now because that's how, listen, that's the one thing. It is needful. And when you leave this place tonight, today you're going to say, wow, 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 I already feel it. Wow, what a service. You see, focus. It's all about focus. It's all about what we're looking at. You see, see Satan, he desires, and I mean he desires strong to, to rob you of your personal blessings. 
He wants to take your peace. He wants to take your power. He wants to take your, your possessions, anything you got that, that you can be used by Him to, to, first off, to be a blessing back to Him, but also your ability not only to have personal blessings, but your ability to be a personal blessing. It's kind of hard to minister to somebody else when you're so shattered you can't even think. It's hard for you to minister to somebody else when you can't even get your mind on what's going on. So, so, so you got to get the focus. So, so he doesn't just want to rob you of your personal blessing and your ability to be a personal blessing. He just doesn't want, he don't want to just stop your momentum. This is, that's a good thing to stop your momentum, but he really wants to prevent you from ever starting back up again. This morning, who remembers Mighty Army? Let's turn your wounds into wisdom. Turn your wounds into wisdom. Now, now, so how does he stop us from ever getting back up? He breaks our focus. You guys just thinking about, well, I really, God, if you really love me, why am I always getting on a tough break? Why I never get a good break? Or that person over here, they're trying to hurt me. That person in my life behind me, they're really tearing me up. Or I can't get it out of my mind what that person did to me. And you're just going on and on and on and on and on. And you just can't focus now on what God is trying to do for you. God is trying to illuminate your life like never before. God is trying to invade your life like never before. The Holy Spirit is trying to overwhelm us, but He cannot. If we keep shutting our own door, the doors have to be flung open. And how's that? What would you focus on? You see, again, Proverbs 28, 29, 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he not. A lot of times people take this as just some wild thing or to think about some kind of wild vision or sometimes they're thinking about rhema, which the rhema's okay. But rhema has to start somewhere and rhema starts with logos. Rhema is when God speaks directly to you and he expounds on logos. But where there is no logos, logos, see, where there is no vision, that really means, this is the Hebrew where there is no vision, where there is no clear word from God. Where there is no clear word from God. When you have a broken focus, you can't hear what God's saying to you. And it says it perish. That word perish means to pine away. It means to slowly let go. Do you know, I'm going to tell you something right now. You don't just backslide overnight. You don't. You don't just quit serving God overnight. You may make a decision, not, I'm not going to serve God anymore. But I guarantee you, you're going, to have to, you're going to have to wrestle the Holy Spirit and wrestle all the things He puts in your way along the way. You don't backslide overnight. And so, as you begin to pine away, as you begin to start disliking the things that you used to like in the Lord and start uh, liking the things that you were disliking that was not of God, and as the things start changing, you. And as you begin to, the old man starts rising up and as things start getting worse and worse, I'm going to tell you what's happening. You don't have that clear word from God that you can stand on. And as you pine away, you'll find out as you're pining away that you don't just backslide. Remember, I can't say it enough. You don't just backslide overnight. You slowly let go of God's hand. Y'all say that with me. You slowly let go of God's hand. So now, now watch this. Now watch this. Here we go. <clears throat> We're going to look at two sisters. All right? My fact, <clears throat> let's take a deeper look at what's going on because the very first time I read this, years ago after I got saved, I really got upset with Mary. I said, well, isn't she kind of lazy? And because I was working swing shift and I was, I had a lot of stuff I had to keep doing. I just thought about, all I can think about is I was Martha. Martha was good. Martha was really doing good. Now she's getting upset because Mary just wanted to be a slacker. And as I started reading, as I started growing in the Lord, I found, wait a minute, I got this all wrong. So let's take a deeper look. See, 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 they, they, these sisters had a lot in common. They were both were loving, sincere women. They both were close to Jesus. Their brother was Lazarus. They were all close. They, 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 they grew up together. They were really strong together. They spent time with him. And they welcomed his presence now. Let's take it deeper. Now, 
lives of similarities begin to change. Why? It starts with their focus on his presence. Now, now we did a study a couple weeks ago, and the name of the study was Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? And it was about Mary and Martha. <laughs> it's right here. When you invited Jesus to dinner, you just didn't invite Jesus. Let me just tell you the people that come along with Jesus. There was Jesus. There was the twelve. And then there was the seventy. Jesus, the twelve, and the seventy. At any time, you could have 83 people walking around. they like Jesus had a mob. It just talks about the 70 just come back. So we don't know whether he had the 70 or not. So it's possible that there was at least 13 people. There's a good possibility there was up to 80 people. We have no idea, but there was more than Jesus. So she invites Jesus and his entourage, however many there was, to come and have supper. Why? <laughs> you see, now we're getting deep. Now we're going to get on down there. Now we're going to see where the rubber meets the road. And now we're going to see how, how things can, can change when you start looking in a different perspective of what's going on here. And so watch this. Watch this. One was preparing to work for him. And the other was preparing to let him work through her. Stop. I want everybody to read that. Just take your time and read that. Both of those things are noble. Both of those things are awesome. Both of those things are powerful. But before you can work for him, you have to understand that it's him working through you. We just, I, I just want to stop here. Just can't. If you ever worked for God and worked for God and got angry and worked for God and said, well, where's all my help? Worked for God and said, well, I don't understand. If we're not careful, we get so caught up in what's going on that we forget to take time out and let him do the work through us first. So, one is being stressed and the other one's being blessed. Let me ask you a question. Where do you want to be today, stressed or blessed? Yeah, blessed. I don't want to be stressed. I'm stressed. Look, look. You, you know, you know good and well that sometimes we do get stressed. Amen. All of us. It's natural. So, so that's because there's there there when we're trying to meet a impossible situation, or when we're overwhelmed with work, or we're overwhelmed with, with questions, or overwhelmed with what's going on. But you know what? It will stop, drop and roll. Stop what I'm doing. Drop to my knees and just roll in His Spirit. Wow. <clears throat> it's amazing what can happen. So here we go. Here we go. Are you ready, are ready to dig in a little deeper? I hope you're seeing yourself in one of these or both of these or whatever because I've been both of them. But sometimes I'm still both of them. Amen? <clears throat> both were seeking to do the right thing. And in my eyes, when I first read it, I got it all wrong. One was doing the wrong way, and it wasn't. Let me just give you a little hint. It wasn't Mary. That's the hint. I know it's full on the head. I'm giving you a spoiler alert. If you want God to work through you before you work for Him, it's important, number one, that you fix your focus. you got to fix it. Because God's already here. It's up to you to fix it. You see, when I saw her fix the focus, she said, first we're going to speak about uh, position. She said, he sat. She sat at his feet. Think about this thing. She sat at his feet. Doesn't mean she just sat down, but it means literally to sit near. She got as close as she could possibly get to him. How long has it been since you tried your best to get as close to Jesus as you possibly could? Wow. Remember last week we were talking about Simon the Cyrene? You couldn't get any closer than he got to Jesus when he was helping him take that cross. He felt Jesus' breath against his face. <coughs> Can you imagine? 
what that's like. So, so, so watch this. So she's sitting there. Acts 22 and 3, that same word. It says, says Paul was taught at the feet of Gamaliel. He was at the feet of the master, a proper place for a disciple. So if you get at his feet, it's a place where you can where you can worship. It's a place of submission. And other than place of submission, it's a place of peace. When you're at his feet. I, I, the other night, we were, I was not prepared for what was getting ready to happen. Uh, we went to, to, to uh, I, when they said they were going to build a garden for Bethany, and we were going to go there, and it was going to take a few minutes. I just honestly really thought that we were going to stand there, and we were going to stand around I, and, and pray. I had no idea that uh, 40 women pilgrims were going to come out. And in the front, they were holding a cross, and the cross says Bethany's Comfort Garden on it. And it was draped in purple, and they and they brought that cross out together, and they went and set it there in place. And when they did, then they started talking about Bethany, all the pilgrims that, not all of them, but some of the pilgrims that had been with her. And then they wanted me to talk, and, and Linda was talking. I had no idea it was going to be all like that, but you know what? <clears throat> you know, I was overwhelmed. But at the same time, not only was I overwhelmed, I was overwhelmed because what I saw, the agape, and the love. And what was going on, I wish I'd take a picture. I'll take pictures, I wish I'd put them up there for you today, but I will show you uh, what was there. But you know what? <clears throat> it was so awesome because while I was looking at this, I honestly felt like I was at the feet of Jesus. It was so powerful. It took me a couple of hours, even really, to get it back together because it was just so, so awesome. So now watch this now. Watch, watch, watch. Position again. Mary sits at his feet. Martha goes to the kitchen. I just need to stop. Let you think about this. Mary sits at his feet. Martha goes to the kitchen. Now, watch this. If I'm going to fix my focus, it's also got to do with my, watch this, it's my perception. Mary, the Bible says, heard the words of Jesus. That word heard means to hear, continually listen and hearing, not even get tired of what you're hearing. Can you imagine not getting tired of listening to me preach on Sunday morning? Some of y'all are tired right now. I'm even tired right now. <laughs> Can you imagine Jesus just talking and you flow? Ah. So it implies that she continued to think even after he got through talking, she was still thinking about what she was meditating on his word. And Martha, she was distracted by all the commotion. So, so look, look, watch this. I love it. It said she was covered by much servant and she was distracted. While Mary was hearing Jesus talk, Martha heard this.
Samaria's hearing God speak. And she's just dwelling on it and meditating on it. And Martha's in there going, <laughs> Jesus' very presence was there. He was there. He was sitting there. And she did not hear him because all she heard was there. I refuse. God, help me never do that again. Be so overwhelmed with everything around me. My past, my present, my future. And Jesus is trying to bless. No. God, help me to focus right now on what you're doing at this moment. So, <clears throat> so watch this. Look, Martha, what's going on? Martha, or Mary's part is being close to Jesus. And Martha, look, Martha, she said, she didn't, see, Mary didn't even know what was getting ready to take place. She didn't know that the cross was coming. She didn't know that she might not have this opportunity again. She just refused to take Jesus' presence for granted. <clears throat> she refused to let that moment slip out of her hands. I refuse to let this moment slip out of my hands. You know, all I can think of is I remember, I remember. Uh, the doctors told us with Beth, they said, you may, you may could get, maybe get five or ten years. We got eight months. And as we thought she was getting better, all of a sudden it was over. And I'm so glad I didn't take it for granted. Because it slipped right out of my hands. Sitting there, that dedication... And seeing all those pilgrims that were on, was on her walk with her. And they all come up to me and told me how much she had touched them. And that even when she was sick. You know, <clears throat> on the men's walk. I was praying. It was after, after candlelight. And the men were in this little building, in this little room. And it was kind of, kind of dark in this room. Or not, not, not so well lit. So people could concentrate, get their mind off everything. And they were all praying. And I was in there praying with some guys. And when I got up to walk away, one of the older ministers had his hand on my shoulder. And he had a cane, so I actually thought I was, I thought I was backing into him. I thought I was knocking him down. <clears throat> and so I turned around. And when I turned around, he said, I'm here for you. And then he leaned over. He said, brother, it was Dennis, Dr. Dr. D. Everybody knows Dr. D. It's in the maze. Dr. D leaned over me and grabbed me like a dad. And he said, I have no idea what you've been through. And I broke. And we all know how long we were there. He was, we just held each other cry. And as I walked away from him, there was another man's brother. He grabbed me, the, 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 the leader of the pack that, for that walk, Ricky. He's big as a house, a bear. And he, he lost his son. He come up to me, he just grabbed me. <clears throat> and for five or ten minutes, all he said was, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. That was it. Tears and snot everywhere. I tried to walk a little further. And more grabbed me, and more grabbed me. And by the time I finally got to my seat, I don't even know what time it was. When I got to my seat, as I'm getting ready to sit down and finally get my composure, Brett Reese comes up and puts both hands on the back of my back. And he slaps me. And he says, it's not over yet, brother. And he said, I was at that walk that Bethany was on. And he said, Beth, he said, Brett, can I talk to you for a minute? He said, yes, you can. She said, I mean, by ourselves. He said, sure. And so they went somewhere and sat down. And she said, please don't talk to me like I'm dying. And he said, I won't. He said, when this is over, she said, Beth, he said, when this is over, when the time is right, I want you to go to my daddy. I'm going to try to get this out. I want you to go to my daddy. And I want you to tell him how much I love him. 
and tell him how strong he has been for me. And I thank him for that. And I'm so sorry that it had to end this way. And so he told me that. And the whole time all this was going on, I was at the feet of Jesus. I could have had my mind somewhere else. I could have had a whole lot of stuff going on, but I closed my ears to every, I didn't even hear those pilgrims. I heard nothing but these guys. As God was using those guys to minister to me and talk about healing, there was a healing taking place inside of me. And then when Brett finished it, oh God. <clears throat> possible to work outside of your anointing and that hurts and it aggravates you and that keeps you to no end frustrated or is it possible to work beyond your anointing anointing you're called but you're overloaded one more one more you know you take a, you take a cup I can take a barrel and I can take a little bitty cup. And if both of them are filled to the absolute brim, all it takes is one drop to overflow it. You may be a big man. You may not feel so big at all. When you're about to explode, one drop is all it takes. Is it possible to have enough to get you going but not enough to keep you? I've seen some services when I come out, I felt like chasing down, chasing, uh, fighting the devil with a with a water pistol. I got outside, hey, you're right, yeah, glory! And I went outside and couldn't find hell or the water pistol. There's two dangers. And Mary was, or Martha was experiencing both of them. She was experiencing burnout. 
Not Rose Cup, she was yours. She was married to some other things. She was married to one of them. She was burning out. She didn't stop and take advantage of God's presence. She didn't let God work through her. She wanted to work for God without Him working through her. There's nothing wrong with working for God. I want you to work for God. And God wants you to work for Him. But if you do it the wrong way, if you don't work for God, I'm going to tell you, there's some people when they walk out here to rust. It's like the ten men with wisdom vials out there, the the rain. Some people in praise and worship are going, we're going, glory to God, and they're going, okay, okay, okay. Something special. Get ready, guys. I know you're going to like this. That's the most, one of the most awesome speeches I ever heard. How I many remember Gladiator? There was some guys, like a guy named Maximus, and there was guys named Marcus Aurelius and all that. There was these guys. I don't know how true that one is, but there was these guys. They really were there. Marcus Aurelius is quoted by a lot of people. Abraham Lincoln even quoted him. What we do in life echoes in eternity. If what I do in life echoes in eternity, why do I want to send up burnout? Why do I want to send up flesh? Because I'm going to tell you what, flesh and burnout, what it does when you send up, you know what happens? It falls back down. The Bible says in Psalm 118, 6 through 8, Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be, ever, be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemy. So awesome. And God wants to work through us in a very powerful way. And I'm going to tell you what will happen if we let Him work through us. If you're here today and you look around and you see empty pews and it aggravates you, and all it does is just aggravate you, then you're on the verge of one of two things. If all it does is aggravate you, then you're on the verge of burn out or rust out. But when you see these empty pews, if you say, God, work through me, to help take care of this, the pews will fill up. You know why? Because now God's working through me, and when people see God working through me, they're going to want to come and see what, what happened. God is so awesome. Let Him. This is the final round of This is it. We're getting ready to leave this place. looking for somebody that will not only work for him but somebody he can work through because the person he works through will not burn out the person he works through will not rust out the person that he works through his leaf will not wither the person he works through the roots will always get ground or get ground the person he works through this morning again on the way up here I said God I don't want church as usual. If it's going to be church as usual, God, I'm going to turn around and go back home. And I said, God, I, I want you to challenge me today. Challenge me so that I can challenge the congregation. Wow. God's got something so special for us. DC, come on up here. Come to me <coughs> between the men's walk and the women's walk. I had two, two or three ladies come to me, and one lady said, You know, Bethany was at my table, and another lady come to see me. I ruined with Bethany. And she said, There were some mornings when she got up, she was so sick, she really couldn't feel like getting up. And so I told her one day, I'm just going to leave you right here, and I'll come back and get you later. You know what Bethany told her? Said, No, help me get up. I don't want to miss what God's going to do today. And I 
sin. Because I remember how Bethany would have those bad mornings. And she, most people come to me and kept saying, we tried to get her to take her to the room. We tried to get her to put her somewhere so she could rest. And all she kept saying is, number one, I don't want to miss what God's doing today. And number two, I don't want you to miss it because you're taking care of me. Let's go see what God's got in store. Wow. I don't want to miss what God's doing right now. I'm not looking behind me. There's plenty of things behind me to annoy me and aggravate me and maybe sorry about. There's plenty of things in front of me that can aggravate me and just bring distraction and get me distraught. There's stuff right now, all kinds of things. There's stuff going on at the church before church that, that, that were there to distract me right now. My mind, I want everybody to be right here. My mind, y'all say, y'all think it to yourself. My mind is in one place. I need to be at the feet of Jesus. I need comfort. I need hope. I need power. I need anointing. I need wisdom to handle some of this stuff I'm going through. I need your anointing so I can work. You can work through me, God. Not me doing the work, but you working through me. My mind's in one spot, and that's here, and that's now. Now, if you're ready, if you're in that spot where it's just you and God, you hear my voice, but it's just you're not thinking about yesterday, you're not thinking about tomorrow, you're not thinking about after service, you're not thinking about where you're going to go eat, you're not thinking about the person behind you or beside you, all you're thinking about is you. Sitting in the master's feet. You and God. When every head bowed, every eye closed, well, here's what I want you to do. If you're in that spot, if you're in that place, when nobody's looking around, I want you just to raise that hand and hold it up. Raise that hand and hold it up. God, I'm here. It's just me and you. Put your hands up. My hands up. God, it's just me and you. God, I need you. I need you. I need you. Father, you see these hands of people that are prepared to receive from you. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, bless them. Anoint them. Use them. Work through them. Refresh their spirit. Refresh their hope. Refresh their strength. Do something new in their lives today. Father, and they leave this place. Let them know that today was the day. Today was the day. On March 5th, 2019, we decided when we come to church, we'll put everything else aside and we're going to worship you. And we're going to watch what you do as you build us. And as you build us, you'll build the church. We thank you for every hope restored, every strength renewed, every grief brought comfort, every hurt, every misunderstanding taken care of. Flood it with your presence. Flood it with your power, Holy Spirit. Touch. We exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you. And we thank you for something special happening right now. Just, just bask in his presence. You may not have some great wired up feeling inside, but you know what? If you've got your mind on God, he's doing something.
our hopes are going to be renewed. We're going to see something special as we trust God to do something today. Right now, I want everybody to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I'm going to say it again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For what's going on right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
privilege to be able to call you my father. And I thank you so much for the sacrifice of your son. He didn't have to do that. And Lord, help me never forget, Lord, that when the son left, he said, I'm going to send another just like me. But he's going to do it more. Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. Help me never forget the power and the anointing that is present. Flood our lives. Even on our jobs. Flood our lives. Even on our play. Flood our lives. And we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord. Refuse to have church as usual anymore. Y'all say that. I refuse to have church as usual anymore. God shine through me. God shine through me. God shine through me. In the name of Jesus. We pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Now let's go beat the Baptist to McDonald's. <laughs>